always imagine five or five. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. Some people, but no one in this office, I assure you, might call it stupidity. Hey, who's she calling stupid? So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch, but financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can, what's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. We prefer to think of it as chasing the savings. Turns out that not having to pay kickbacks, fines, and rent in the most expensive city in Halcyon improves our liquidity. Plus, Sublight keeps this place running remarkably well, and they sure drive business our direction. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Are you serious? Well, we interviewed the parents extensively. They had plenty of awkward childhood stories that illustrated their daughter's clumsiness and capriciousness. Hey, those are entirely made up. Furthermore, the claim spurred a whole line of fashion-related policies. It's become a very lucrative market. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she said, If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well... Hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd, theoretically, add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. I'm forbidden from accepting bribes, no matter how tempting. The employee handbook doesn't say anything about that. Very well. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. I need a word. You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. Being a surgeon out there isn't as great as it seems. At least half your day is paperwork and red tape. No amount of money is worth dealing with that. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. Maybe as line holders or warm bodies? Oh, sure. You've gotta wait in line for just about anything in Byzantium. And not everyone has the time or inclination to do it themselves. As for warm bodies, some companies like to keep extra workers on site to look more productive. Come on, I thought we were celebrating. <laughs> you want me to think about the future? Maybe you haven't noticed, but you can't even count on a bribe making it into the right pocket. What's the point of planning for anything around here? Hate to say it, but Halcyon's already there. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Don't make it weird. 
Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. You don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's nothing personal. It's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy-feelies, huh? Some crew? You were adjusting before you... I swear. Next time we put in the groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. So I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He was probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I'd get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but he'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? We got a line common, you and me. It's operating just a teensy bit outside of the manufacturer's expected parameters, huh? Oh, Captain! 
I just... Every Sam you... Thank you, customer. Warning! Okay, Captain, she's gone. I'm near about vibrating, I'm so excited. So she got here, and the first thing she said was, Oh, you smell nice, like mock apples. And I was like, yeah, new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. She was worried she wouldn't get the words out right, especially after that message about Isabel. It's sweet. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it'd work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals, talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. You got an eye for people, Captain. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Junlei at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour. Want to be a brand new you? Try out our respecification machine. Alex installed it himself, right before he died. Welcome back, Captain. How? What part? Of Mm-hmm. The Acropolis District is off limits. 
What in the law's name are you on about? Sure. Let me just take that off your hands. Did I say restricted area? Slip of the tongue. What I meant was, welcome to the Acropolis District. What's, what's showing off? Captain, I stand out here like a big, greasy thumb. Welcome to the official headquarters of the Halcyon Holdings Corporation Board. Today's greeting is brought to you by Auntie Cleo, a subsidiary of Holway Pharma. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. A UD up. Move along. Today's greeting is brought to you by Andrew. Do we really need all this? I have to go through three checkpoints just for. Please step away. Huh. I didn't realize we were still using those iridescent stickers. But this looks right. I'll just need you to register your weapons with a revised request to carry 32B form. Now, let's see. Damn it. When did I run out of forms? Well, how nice for you. Do you have any idea how long it takes to request new forms? Just know there are a bunch of guards upstairs and they're all high on dervish mist and low on patient. Don't worry, boss, I got a plan. First, we get ourselves some tossball sticks, right? And we sidle up to him all polite-like. Felix, don't you start. Yeah, boss? Are we gonna get in trouble today? Not that I want to, just seems to happen around you, is all. I understand you're Maverick Johnston's new star. Well done. Personal assistant to Adjutant Akande and Chairman Rockwell. Ah. Oh, you were being serious. I'm obliged to inform you that Chairman Rockwell is unavailable for an indeterminate duration. Will there be anything else? for you I beg your pardon Minister Clark's former office is currently closed to solicitors what oh dear thank you for reminding me
Look at this fancy office. Chairman's bleeding the whole colony dry. I'm Chairman Rockwell, and I'm here to address a serious issue facing us. As you all know, our colony has been successful beyond our wildest dreams. Unfortunately, we've recently discovered that our food supply will not be able to sustain Halcyon's population in the long term. Everyone will die. Everyone will slowly stop living from malnutrition. But we're doing it together. And that's what matters. I fucking swear, if someone doesn't give me something to read that will placate the masses soon, all of you will find yourselves violently unemployed. But I can assure you there's nothing to fear. We've got a solution. It's called the Lifetime Employment Program. We will freeze most of the colony to preserve resources, while the best and brightest of Byzantium continue living in prosperity. Look, you idiots! How many times do I have to tell you we can't say shit like that? Fire whoever wrote this! While Halcyon's brightest minds solve the problem of our nutritional shortage, the rest of the colony will be placed in suspended animation. Individuals will be revived on a rotating basis so that every Halcyonite can be part of the important work of saving our colony. By testing paperweights. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Let, let's go again. And someday, in the not-too-distant future when we've solved this crisis, we'll all be back together again working for the good of Halcyon. Until then, the board shall provide for the deserving just as it always has. So, obey your supervisors, take your vitamins, follow your corporate-mandated grooming rituals, and rest assured with the board on your side, there is nothing to worry about. That was all a story, wasn't it? It's not real. I always knew the board was crooked. But this? This is just evil. That Chief Junlei sure seems well, huh?
I think I'm gonna start taking my lunches out of the city. That will make me doubtful. Not so fast. What level clearance? You're just making up words. Basically, if you don't work here, or for Chairman Rockwell himself, you're not getting in. I don't know how you got that, but I still don't know you, and I don't have any new clearances on the list. What are you talking about? There's no such thing. What? There's no way. I'm clear to know about all clearances. I mean, I've gotta be, right? Whoa, there's no need for that. Go on through, and let's pretend this conversation never happened. Visitors alive. What? Uh, okay. Thanks for the tip. Now you really... Nothing ex... What? That's, That's nice. nice. No visitor. Hey, did Tillman get transferred or something? That's right, you weren't here when it happened. Some UDL officers took him into custody. <laughs> Tillman designed all those wanted posters. So UDL's interrogating Tillman? Ugh, that's disgusting. Can't believe I had lunch with the guy.
I hear about you ordering more tests performed with sample 4157. Keep your eyes out for dissidents. Here they come!
Group, report. Bioka is drunk. Surprise. You have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. I think you're being modest. I've been keeping up with you ever since Emerald Vale. Now that was an interesting piece of work. A rundown backwater, barely worth the ink on a map. Until you showed up. When you cut off power to Edgewater, you saved me a great deal of trouble. Now I don't have to bother trying to save that town. All this happened because some mysterious stranger fell out of the sky. You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. I'm not here to talk about stolen chemicals. I'm after something far more valuable. Your cooperation. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. He has a litany of charges against him. Vandalism, illegal experimentation, sedition. I could go on. Wells is a dangerous madman. His plan is going to endanger everyone in Halcyon. He's an obsessive psychopath. And he's using you. You're in contact with Wells. I want you to send us a tracing signal from his communication terminal. You are making a serious mistake. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? Welcome back. How? See you soon. Now arriving at Phineas's top secret orbital lab. <laughs> 